Now there is a delicate balance between all the different aspects of a video game that all add up together to one final product. Sure, some could argue that gameplay is king and should be prioritised at all costs, but in the current landscape of experimental, artistic and stylistic video games, that isn't always the case. Other aspects, like a great story, captivating writing and interesting characters, can play just as big a part of any video game as the gameplay itself. This list will look at great video games that were let down by their game. Gameplay. We're not necessarily talking about masterpieces here. These games are great, but were just held off being perfect by an element of their gameplay somewhere along the line. With that in mind, I'm Will Fort Culture, and here are 10 amazing video games that are terrible to play. 10. Alan Wake Alan Wake, developed by Remedy Entertainment, is based around a writer struggling with insomnia, paranoia, and demons. The game hinges on its eerie atmosphere, narrated by Alan himself, who ends up in all sorts of weird, frightening scenarios due to his sleep deprivation. However, what lets the game down is the repetitive gameplay of shining a light to pacify enemies, as only then can you shoot them. You'll go from wielding a pocket torch to a security flashlight to some giant-ass handheld spotlight, switching between single-action weapons. Yet, most of the time, you'll find yourself trying to avoid as many enemies as possible in order to quickly get to a new checkpoint. This becomes even more tedious when searching for collectibles or going for achievements, as the way forward is often locked off until every single enemy is dead. Beyond repetitive flashlight shining gameplay, Alan Wake boasts some interesting characters and genuinely funny dialogue to help blanket the issue. On top of that, there's some really cool set pieces and environments that ramp up as the paranoia deepens, too. 9. Bioshock Generally accepted as one of the greatest games of all time, there isn't a lot that Bioshock doesn't have going for it. The story is fantastic for one, music is great for another, and it has some incredible environmental design. Being set in Rapture, an underwater city made for the highest of society to thrive, away from the riffraff above. So what let it down? Well, most agree that, although not the worst thing you'll ever experience, the gameplay was very simplistic. You go to a new area, meet a key character, boom, your road ahead becomes blocked. You now have to do something for this key character in order to continue, and of course it requires killing countless enemies and taking photographs of them to get bonuses? A unique idea at the time, sure, but one that has not been missed in the modern era. 8. Final Fantasy XV There's nothing inherently wrong with Final Fantasy XV's gameplay, in all honesty, though it was somewhat of a departure from the other hundred games' mechanics. The biggest issue with the gameplay was the pacing. At one point, you'd be in an all-out battle with a group of soldiers, where now you have to flick through menus and plan your attacks, or just button mash. Then you'd be slowly driving through the countryside, always with the driving. In fairness to Final Fantasy XV, it does a lot of things right if you have the time, patience and understanding, and honestly, it's a good game. Countless unique characters, regardless of how short they're on screen, and a variety of things to do. You've also got an epic, if not convoluted, story. Yet, many people didn't get to enjoy it because the game can be incredibly drawn out. In conclusion, sometimes the answer is not to add more things for variety. Instead, it is to focus on what you already have, refining it, and making the core gameplay loop as fun as possible. 7. Mafia 3 Mafia 3 had the exact opposite problem to Final Fantasy XV. Some games spread themselves too thin, and others become so boring it's a surprise anyone made it past the prologue. If you did make it past Mafia 3's prologue, though, you'd be hit with one of the coolest openings to any game in the last decade. It kicks off the narrative and shows the motivations for a lot of characters in the story. And this story, woo! Honestly, it's about as good as it gets. Now, this is not to be saying that you're going to be playing a broken, bad game, but you will be playing the same level structure copied and pasted over and over and over. Honestly, I am not exaggerating, and this repetition becomes so overbearing, I can fully understand someone dropping the game entirely. Honestly, I remember thinking to myself, this game would be so much better if it was a TV show. Mafia 3 is broken up into little episodes, districts, chunks dedicated to different characters and arcs, and yet there you are doing the same kill animation against the same enemies in near-identical buildings. 6. The Last Guardian 
The long-awaited spiritual successor to Shadow of the Colossus, The Last Guardian disappointed fans with its janky and outright non-responsive gameplay elements. The biggest mechanic is, of course, based around your relationship with a giant dog, rabbit, kangaroo thing that is present to look after a young boy and help him through his journeys. That is the selling point, this unique relationship between the two entities. What's most unfortunate about this is that the contact between them, motivated by the player, is often so busted that it takes you right out of the experience. If you don't believe me, there are countless videos of how bad this game can get. Now the game has a beautiful atmosphere and a speechless narrative based around this unlikely duo that's complemented wonderfully by pretty environments and decent level design. But what good is that when you're trying to jump across said level and Clifford the big grey dog won't even catch you? He'll just stare. Yep, just stare and watch you fall to your death. 5. Outlast Horror games are difficult to pull off, we, we all know this. Outlast came out at a time where it had to compete with such titles as Alien Isolation, which blew other horror games out the water due to its scope and source material. Outlast had one gameplay loop. Explore, find danger, run from danger, hide, repeat. With this, it also gave players the responsibility of managing a camera that had to be stocked with batteries. That is it in regard to Outlast's gameplay. On the flip side, it does have a lot going for it in light of villainous, evil characters and an underlying sinister story. It did its best to be a fresh take on the horror genre, being set in a mental hospital with a twist, but all in, it was held up by the antagonists and a refreshingly short length that made sure Outlast didn't outstay its welcome. 4. Spec Ops The Line Spec Ops flew under almost everyone's radar. Another military third-person cover shooter, oh and there's Nolan North again. It deals with the harsh, mind-bending circumstances of war that are suffered by your standard soldiers. It showcases this through gruesome scenarios and player-made choices. The story is awesome. It's inspired by Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, which, although well-known, is a refreshing portrayal when placed in a video game. However, the game takes a dive when the reality sets in that you'll be slogging through deserts and the same sand-ridden city for around 10 hours. Enemy AI is cowardly at best, meaning that harder difficulties require you to act the same way if you want to survive. Duck behind cover, peek out, shoot, run, repeat. It is not the most engaging gameplay loop, but luckily it's supplemented by a great story and an interesting camaraderie between you and your allies. 3. Heavy Rain If there's one game here that can't be enjoyed by everyone, it's Heavy Rain. This is what happens when too many people say yes to David Cage. In a game with arguably no gameplay, what is there to discuss? The story is incredibly depressing, in the wrong ways. And yes, there are right ways to be depressing, as you'll see in the next entry. But this is just a point-and-click adventure on a controller, which strongly, aggressively insists that you use motion controls. You walk around, interacting and detecting, wandering through the dreary world of murder and mystery. But still, there was nothing like it, honestly, at the time. It had a deep interwoven story that felt as if you were playing through episodes in a TV show. It follows a detective -y plot with drama and a good amount of intrigue. Ultimately, as aforementioned, whether you enjoy Heavy Rain is a bit of a coin toss. Some adore the game and others find the entire execution laughable. 2. Life is Strange Depressing, episodic, minimal gameplay, all words that lead directly into this entry which could also be described as point and click. This time, however, you've got one absolute banger of a story behind it that is going to make you feel some kind of way. Honestly, I have never felt more uncomfortable from a video game, and only a few games can leave you lying awake in bed weeks later wondering what the heck just happened. The story is paced incredibly well, introducing and affirming characters you can genuinely sympathise and relate to. There are twists, turns and moments you'll never forget. The downside, however, is there really isn't a game behind Life is Strange. You could watch a playthrough online and probably gain just as much. You play as Max, who wanders around her campus interacting with people, entities and her environment. In brutal honesty, the gameplay is not engaging. Somehow though, it's still great at what it sets out to do, which is telling a gut-wrenching story of choice about a goddamn time-travelling college student. 1. Fallout 4 Here's a quote I like. Fallout 4 was a good game, 
It just wasn't a good Fallout game. From Morrowind all the way through to Fallout 4, you can see a blatant, intentional decrease in role-playing elements and a simplification of gameplay mechanics from Bethesda. Because as their releases became more mainstream, the games needed to be streamlined for the now huge audience. Fallout 4 is not a bad game. However, beyond a large open world, varied companions, detailed side quests, and some okay expansions, the game has two glaring issues with gameplay. Firstly, the dungeon system that was copied from Skyrim. Almost all hostile structures, be they abandoned mines, stores, or factories, are the same. An area full of enemies where you can rush to the end, face some kind of boss, grab your chest, and dip. Second issue is overpowered builds. This game makes it trivial to get your hands on legendary or unique items, paired with skills and abilities which will leave you sprinting at enemies and smashing heads in with your bare hands. Combine this with the neutered RPG mechanics and you have a great yet honestly bland game, developed by a company that are starting to look a few years past their prime. And there you have it folks, 10 amazing video games that are terrible to play. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and drop me a follow on Twitter at YouSlyDogU. I'm Will for Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.